Hello everybody, I'm Harley from Garden Florida and in today's video we are going to do an update on all of our Anona trees here in Bradenton, Florida. Now just to give you a quick update, I actually am currently moving all my fruit trees to a new house. Now if you guys didn't know, my previous house that I lived in, we're actually in the process of selling it right now. And this is actually a positive rather than a negative because my old house actually had a lot of shade and I actually wasn't able to fruit a lot of my Anonas. So in this new house, as you see, we have a lot of uh, open shade over, open sun over there. And we're actually going to trim some trees here to uh, better allow some sunlight in. So let's go check out some of our Anonas and some of our new Anonas that I'm sure you guys are waiting to see. And let's get talking about them. So let's go. So I'm currently in the process of moving a lot of my uh, Anonas. So, but like I said, in this video, we're only going to talk about Ananasiae. This is a Gefner that I have. And it's in a seven gallon pot, I believe. This Geffner is gonna be planted here at the new house. As you see, something I've been facing these past few months is uh, I've been being attacked by uh, a known pest called the potato leaf hopper. And the potato leaf hopper actually makes your leaves kind of curl up a little bit. These leaves kind of look a little ugly because they've been being attacked by the potato leaf hopper. All along here, I actually have a lot of anonas that are still potted up. And a lot of these anonas are gonna be planted along the front area where it gets full sun here at my house. And some of them are actually gonna be left in the pot, uh, in a much bigger pot. And I'll actually just kind of keep them here. And uh, if you didn't know, sugar apples and anonas can grow really big in a pot. So let me just quickly go over some of the uh, cool uh, anonas that I think we should talk about a little bit. So this Anona that's actually right in front of us right here, this is actually an African Pride Atemodia, also known as AP Atemodia. Now this is a really beautiful Atemodia tree because I actually haven't heard of a lot of AP Atemodias for sale in the state of Florida. Now I actually bought this from a gentleman called uh, Aaron Jones and Aaron Jones, he sells uh, fruit trees out of Rivers of Provisions, I believe which is in, I, you know, I know he's really near Tampa. I, I, I can't remember what exactly the name is, but he's in Tampa, let's just say that. And I actually got this African Pride Atemodia for a pretty good price. Believe it or not, this AP Atemodia actually came from California. And he told me that myself. And I actually had someone message me. I believe Atemodia Tropical Nursery in California, or uh, maybe it was someone else, I can't remember. But he actually told me that he sold these atemojas to him. So these are the leaves of the African Pride atemoja. And it actually has a fruit on it. So this is the little fruit of the African Pride atemoja. And believe it or not, this fruit actually has a really distinctive shape and look to it. So I can actually tell it apart very easily from a lot of other uh, atemojas. The fruit itself is is very bumpy and AP Atemodia is actually one of the better Atemodias out there. Now th I know there's a lot of variations of AP. I think there's AP2 and uh, there could be another few APs. So but this is really, this is an Atemodia I'm really looking forward to and I think I'm going to grow it out in a pot for a little longer and I'm, then I'm going to put it in the ground unless I find um, a good spot for it in the future. Now, right next to the AP is, this is actually a Dream Atemodia. Now, I got this Dream Atemodia from uh, Craig and Celeste at uh, Solcata Grove. And as you see, this Dream Atemodia, you can tell it's Dream Atemodia because the Dream Atemodia usually has these really kind of roundish, ovalish shape. And it kind of reminds me of like a cherry moya leaf, but it's not a cherry moya leaf because uh, cherry moya leaves kind of have like a a bluish undertone, kind of like a bluish greenish undertone. Now, Dream Atemodia was actually grown out first by someone named Wayne Clifton. And actually, the late Wayne Clifton, I believe, he is from uh, Bradenton. So he actually grew this Atemodia variety first out in Bradenton. Or, you know, I, I think it's, uh, people claim it's a Cherimoya. But to me, it looks like an Atemodia, so I'm going to say it's Atemodia. But yeah, I'm really excited to plant this dream here because it's actually on Dream Rootstock 2. Yeah, Dream. And it's on Dream Rootstock. And like I said, if you didn't know, Dream Atemodia was first grown out in Bradenton, Florida. And Bradenton, Florida is where I live. So continuing on to our Anonas, I just really want to quickly do a little uh, shout out to these two little Anonas right here. These are actually my yellow uh, so this is yellow soursop. 
Now these yellow soursops, I actually ordered seeds from Stephen Tirani, I believe his name is, from Australia. And how I can tell that these are the real deer, deal yellow guanabana is that the leaves, well, once you grow out a lot of guanabana, you, you tell easily that these, these leaves are super yellow. And it's not that they're chlorinated. I actually have a yellow Thai, or it's called a Thai golden sugar apple, and it does the same thing. The leaves are very kind of chlorinated, and it's not because the tree is sick or a health problem. It's because that's how it is, you know? It's a yellow characteristics that's shown in the fruits are also shown in its uh, growing habit as you know it's new leaves and also when the new leaves fall off and crumble they're completely yellow they're not like the brown uh blackish shape of uh here we have the yellow uh golden guanabana as i call it or soursop and then here we have just like a standard this is a standardized soursop right here so as you see the leaves you can tell like side by side this is the regular soursop and this is the golden, so you can just tell how more yellow the golden soursop is. So I'm really happy that these are growing actually. And uh, the, that bug I told you about in the beginning of the video, the potato leaf hopper, actually was attacking these. And this is a uh, Anona salzmani beet sugar apple. And as you see, this is damaged from the potato leaf hopper. As you see, I was dealing with that for a few months. The potato leaf hoppers were attacking all my Anonas. And uh, if you have potato leaf hopper, I recently bought this one insecticide that I'll include in the description. It's really organic. It's called Pyganic. That's what it's called, Pyganic. And someone in the Facebook group actually put uh, me on this. He recommended it and I bought it and it seems to be working good. Uh, but I just started using it like yesterday. So I still have to see. Now I still will have to uh, apply multiple applications but as you see, that's what the, it does to your nonas. If you're seeing any weird growth like this to your nonas, it's because you have potato leaf hoppers and you need to uh, spray to get rid of them. And neem will not work. Neem oil will not work. Continuing. <laughs> I have some cool grafted stuff that I did myself, like PPC. This is a Pek Pak Chong Atemoja graft, doing really good. This right here, this beautiful specimen of an anona right here, this one right here in front of us, that's actually a cherry lattice seedling. And someone said like on those on those fruit groups that you cannot sprout cherry lattice seedlings or cherry lattice seeds because it's like, um, the seeds won't be fertile or something like that, I don't know. Anyways, that's clearly not true because look at this, this is a, the one and only cherry lattice seeds out of like the 10 or 15 seeds that I did get out of one cherry lot of fruit or out of the two that I got only one sprouted so yeah there was kind of like a weird viability thing because I did all the things I could to sprout them and only one did sprout but I'm glad that this one did sprout and it was really cool because the sprout was completely red like the cherry lotta. so we'll see how this one is in the future so we're gonna quickly go through the rest of our ononas that we have in the pots and then we're gonna go out to see the ones we have planted. So this is a soursop or one now now. 30 gallon, 25 gallon. That's gonna go somewhere in real nice. Right here in this one area, we have a bunch of uh, sugar apples still in the pot. And these I actually had to trim back a lot because they're all being affected by that one potato leaf hopper. And I just didn't want uh, to bring the pests over here. So I made sure to trim them hard because they all attack the newest growth. So that's why this is kind of like cut halfway. And also it's good to do a little trimming on your uh, nonas. So uh, let's go over here to the, the good stuff. So this is the front area of my, uh, my new yard. And we already have a fence coming along this side, but I am planting a lot of like uh, cool things on the side. Like this is Abiyu of China jackfruit. But as you see right here in the front, I have a few anonas placed out that I'm gonna plant and some that are already in the ground. For example, we have, uh, this is a Gefner at the Moya. This 
This right here is a Pet Pak Pak Chong, Thailand, PPC. And I did do a little trimming on them when I first planted them, but I'm just trying to give them a little few days to, uh, to kind of connect to the earth and then I'll start trimming them up harder. As you see, I still have to mulch, I still have to do everything. I still have to add irrigation. But for now we have really good pump at this house, really long hose, so I kind of like, I've always liked hand watering my, uh, my trees, so. But eventually we're gonna get irrigation. So this is actually a cherry lotta. I just transferred this cherry lotta here today and it actually trimmed it in half. So it was actually like two times as tall and I trimmed it right there. Trimmed back some of the other growths. As you see, you could tell it's stretched out. You can tell it's stressed. Well, not really, but I can tell it's stressed because, you know, you were used to seeing how like plump. Now it's kind of like all sad looking, but I've been watering. And that's just how it's going to look for the first few days as it adjusts, you know. And it's also stressing because at the spot, at this hour in, uh, so it's about one o'clock in the afternoon, but at this time at my old house, all these Anonas would be in complete shade and they'd be, they'd only get like a good morning sun and then they'd be uh, the rest of the day in heavy shade and just dappled a light. So at this new house, they're actually gonna be able to get full sun like this all the way till about six or seven and then it cuts off. But nonetheless, like I'm just so happy because I think I'll fill out this this whole area right here with uh, sugar apple, anona, and this area over here. It's all gonna be clear too. I'm gonna do something like more mango, and more known is there too. But there are also gonna be some other stuff sprinkled in. So yeah, guys, this is basically the start to the anona little food forest here. And the point of having these trees here, I kind of want to do a high density, but also do like, um, do really like good trimmings on them, keeping them really compact. I've seen really compact trees that just are loaded with sugar apples once they get to a mature enough age. And it's just all done by uh, keeping on top of the pruning more, uh, maybe like a more of like a less is more concept here. And uh, so, yeah, but like I said, I do want to plant out more sugar apples right here. Kind of take advantage of this full sun, clear that area. And then we're gonna get uh, some arborists to clear some of these taller oak branches, just trim them back to allow this area right here to get more sun. And uh, we'll actually be able to plant out some more sugar apples, kind of lining the driveway. And when I say sugar apples, you know, they could be at the Moya or maybe Abiyu or Jackfruit or something, but just we want more sunlight. And actually, this property, we're actually able to cut trees on the last one, they were protected for some reason. So on this one, we're actually, it'll be easier for us. And I don't know if you've noticed, but this house also came with, I know I wanted to talk only about Anonas, but this house also came with huge uh, turpentine mango trees. So I've been uh, doing some uh, grafting and, and some grass have been taking, some haven't. But as you see, like that's another uh, mango tree that I've been grafting on. And something I didn't even show you guys is my uh, Nadai Vietnamese sugar apples. So really happy for this tree to be in the ground. This is gonna be a good tree to harvest. And uh, oh, I, I didn't, even, didn't even notice, but this is a Thai purple sugar apple. So as you see, I'm getting some of my genetics in the ground here. This is actually another cherry lotta. This one's actually near the other cherry lotta. My other one that I planted right here. So yeah, guys, this is just a little update video on the sugar apples, on the nonas here at my house, because I know you guys are probably wondering like, what, where all my nonas been? Here's a, this is a, here's a PPC Pet Pet Chong. growing in Florida. It looks just like a sugar apple, but if you guys didn't know, Pet Pak Chong has 75% of its genetics are sugar apple. So that's why it looks more sugar apple and the other 25 are cherimoya. And if you didn't know, some atemoyas actually have more of a cherimoya trait than uh, sugar apple. So 
and vice versa. So something I recently did on these atamoyas is I, I'm training them now to branch out. So as you see, they're, come, they're actually flowering and pushing out of this new growth again. And with all these, uh, with the full sun now, we'll be actually able to get a bunch more flowers and fruits. So I'm really looking forward to, to that. So like I said, guys, here I am just on my new, uh, new property. Like I said, my goal here is to just plant out a bunch of fruit trees, graft on the, what's, what was already here, like this mango was already here. And I grafted, um, I got Maha Chinook, I grafted. Yeah, this is Maha Chinook, Orange Sherbert, this is Kiwi that I grafted. So yeah guys, my next uh, few Months is gonna be just moving stuff here, planting anonas. I don't know how much anonas I'm gonna actually plant in this section, quite a lot. And uh, if you didn't know, anonas can be planted quite high density. And as long as they're pruned and maintained, they can actually be very fruitful. And uh, very productive. So, yeah. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching my Ananasia fruit update. I hope you guys are sort of now aware of what I'm doing here in Bradenton. Uh, I, we still haven't sold the other house, the round house, and I'm gonna make an update video just to show you how things are doing there. Like I said, not much has grown because, or not much is fruiting, stuff has grown, but like I said, I want fruit production. I don't really want leaf production. So that's why at first when my parents decided to sell that old house, I was kind of like a little disappointed because it was like, all oh, my fruit trees are there. I'm gonna have to move them all. The process is gonna be hard. But once I saw like what I was, what we we're actually getting into, and what um, you know the possibility, everything was just like okay, let's get all those trees out of the shade, let's get them into full sun, let's get irrigation, and kind of let's get like the, you know, the actual process going, the fruit, the fruit stuff going. So guys, thank you once again. I'm Harley from Warren NFL. Hope you guys like my little Ananasi fruit update. If you want to see any uh, update video soon or anything on uh, just anything fruits and stuff let me know down in the comments below i like to read them and i like to respond and i like to uh you know make videos based on what you guys want to see so everyone i'm harley from garden florida and i hope you have a good day bye bye now